So the other morning I was just casually digging in my yard with a camera conveniently placed above me when I happened to stumble across some buried treasure. And by treasure, I mean the Trezor Model T. Gotta love that overexposed picture. So the unboxing for this is pretty straightforward. First had to take off the shrink wrap, brush away some of the dirt left over from having this in the ground. Clean packaging showing off the hardware wallet. Pretty simple three-step process to get us started, which turned into a four-step process after I removed the smaller box. And inside the smaller box, we had some stickers along with a Trezor branded USB cable, and then some physical printed paper where you can record the seed phrase for your wallet. Then back to the box. The only other thing in the box is the actual hardware wallet itself. Has a security sticker over the USB-C port. Besides that, nothing else in the box. Pretty simple, but it has everything to get you started. So why did I spend around 250 bucks on a hardware crypto wallet? Well, I've actually received quite a few emails from people asking how they could support the channel, and they were wondering if I had a way for them to donate via crypto, and up until now I did not. I have an account with an exchange online, but those are not good for a few reasons that I'll cover in a couple minutes. So before I started accepting anything via crypto, I wanted to secure it in the best way I knew possible, and that was with a hardware wallet, otherwise known as cold storage. The two brands I researched were Ledger and Trezor. I ultimately settled on the Trezor for a couple reasons. I also want to make it clear that I'm not a huge fan of these misspellings of words for brand names, but I understand the need for them because there are limited names left, but it also makes it kind of annoying to pronounce it. So the first reason I went with the Trezor is that it has a color touchscreen, so all interaction with it takes place on that touchscreen. Yes, you connect it to your computer, but all confirmations and pin entries take place on the hardware wallet touchscreen. The reason I like this is that you don't need to worry about a keylogger on your computer recording your input. The firmware is open source, that wasn't a huge factor for me, but it is nice. And then the last feature they support that I really like is Shamir Backup. So typically you have a wallet recovery seed, which is a list of words, and this can be used to restore your wallet. The list needs to be stored offline, which means it's written down on paper, engraved on something, or any other means of storing it that is not digital. But if someone gets access to that list of words, they can get full access to your wallet. You could also easily lose the list, and at that point you won't be able to recover your wallet if your hardware wallet is lost or destroyed, meaning that you'll lose all your crypto. What Shamir Backup does is that you can select how many word lists you want to generate and how many of those word lists it takes to recover the account. So in my case, I said I wanted three word lists and I would require two to restore the account. So why is this beneficial? Let's say you keep one list for yourself, you give one list to a family member, and you give the third list to a trusted friend. Any of those lists on their own is useless, but with two of them, you can still recover your account. So if one list is stolen, the thief can't do anything with it, and if it's lost, you're still able to recover your wallet because all you need is two. In my case, without any friends, I just hide the list in three different secure locations. So those are the main reasons I went with the Trezor Model T. It also supports FIDO2 authentication, which is nice, so it can be a backup hardware security key to my UB keys that I use for some accounts. So why a hardware wallet instead of the other options out there? To understand that, let's talk about the other options that are available. There are online or web wallets, and most of the time you'll have one of these if you use a centralized exchange. It's extremely important to note that you don't actually own the coins stored in these wallets because you don't have the keys related to the wallet. You get access to these wallets by logging into these exchanges' websites or apps, but they still hold the keys. These are also referred to as custodial wallets because someone else technically controls the keys and ensures that they are stored securely. So since you don't actually have access to the keys and you're dependent on a third party that can get hacked, attacked, or maybe that company is shady and they decide to walk away with all the crypto, it is not a great option. Next are mobile and desktop wallets. 
These are wallets that you create locally and store locally on your mobile device or desktop. These are much better than web wallets as you have full control over the keys related to the wallets. But since these are on devices connected to the internet, it is vulnerable to hacks, malware, and phishing. And as an example, let's say you have a mobile wallet on your phone and you never saved a backup of your wallet or the recovery phrase. If you accidentally lose your phone or erase it for some reason, you will lose complete access to that wallet. The wallet types I just mentioned are all considered hot wallets. They are stored in places connected to the internet or they are stored on the internet in the case of centralized exchanges. This makes them convenient to use, but they are also much more vulnerable to being accessed by malicious actors. That brings us to the cold wallet category. These wallets are kept offline, which greatly reduces the attack surface for a malicious actor. The first type of wallet in this category is a paper wallet. The name is pretty self-explanatory. You literally write the keys related to the wallet, the public and private key on paper. While this might seem like the best option because there's zero tech involved, it's not. The two main reasons why it's not is that the initial generation of the wallet usually takes place on a computer and then you copy down the public and private key to the physical paper. And the next reason is that if you want to actually access the wallet, you'll need to enter the private key on the computer. And at that point, it's no better than a hot wallet. And you also have the chance that you just lose the paper. The last main type of wallet is a hardware wallet, which is the most secure option. Keys are generated offline in a secure environment. The private key remains unexposed as it remains securely on the hardware device and transactions are verified through the hardware wallet and not online on your computer. Therefore, no one can make transactions without having access to your physical hardware device. In the future, I might make some videos on the only crypto I think that has any real future, which is Monero. It has potential with its privacy advantages, which I think gives it some sort of intrinsic value, compared to Bitcoin or Ethereum, which I think is majority, if not all, extrinsic value. So until next time, keep your crypto safe and don't buy any NFTs.